During the week of October 7th, 2013, we experienced three separate incidents involving rigging failures. The first incident involved the use of an excavator to drag a section of SDR-11 HDPE piping weighing 28 pounds per foot. The section of pipe was in excess of 1,450 feet in length. During the process, a 4-inch synthetic sling was overloaded to the point of breakage. As it was rigged, the sling had a capacity of 5,200 pounds. Now, bear in mind that synthetic slings have a safety factor of between 5 and 7 to 1. This means that at a minimum, the sling in this incident was loaded to an excess of 26,000 pounds, upwards to 36,000 pounds in order to experience this type of failure. After an investigation, it was revealed that the crew had moved similar sections of piping using the same sling and using the same techniques. One variable the crew overlooked was the presence of water inside the piping. This section of pipe they were moving on this occasion had been hydro tested the previous day. And although the hydro crew had drained the pipe, some water still remained inside the 1450 foot section, adding considerable weight. When the crew attempted to move the section of piping, the sling stretched to complete failure. The second incident involved a subcontractor. In this incident, a suspended load was dropped when the synthetic sling contacted a sharp surface and was severed. The third incident is similar to the previous one. A gate valve was being lifted when the synthetic sling it was rigged with came into contact with a sharp surface and it was also severed. In this incident, a cart that was used to move material was damaged by the falling valve, which weighed in excess of 500 pounds. Two things are common to all three incidents. Luckily, no one was injured, and all three incidents involved synthetic slings. Most slings used for rigging have a safety factor of 5 to 1 or 7 to 1. This means a sling rated for 5,000 pounds shouldn't break until it sees a load of 25 to 35,000 pounds. Rigging loads and counting on the safety factor is not allowed. You must always rig so that you don't exceed the load rating on the sling's data label. If you know your load weight is only slightly over the sling's rated capacity, you must still use a sling with a higher rated capacity. Never rely on the safety factor of any rigging component. Let's take a look at some sling breaking tests. Now pardon the video quality, but this was lifted from YouTube, so it's just a little bit fuzzy. The sling here is a standard two inch, two ply, heavy duty sling with a vertical lifting capacity of 6,400 pounds. This sling has a safety factor of five to one, so it should be able to experience 32,000 pounds before breaking. This sling broke at 32,500 pounds, just a bit above the expected breaking point of 32,000 pounds. This next example is a new two inch, two ply sling using a 10% edge cut. failed at 18,800 pounds. This is a 40% decrease in the overall strength of the sling. This next example is representing a new sling with a face cut. A face cut is a slight cut to one ply the entire width of one side of the sling. The face cut sling broke at 23,800 pounds or a 27% loss in the overall strength of the sling. This next example represents a two inch two ply sling with a knot tied in it. The use of knots to shorten the sling is prohibited by OSHA as well as Haskell. As the knot tightens, it actually cuts into itself causing failure of the sling. The sling with a knot tied in it failed at 13,000 pounds. 
This is about a 60% loss in the overall strength of the sling. You know, it's said that things happen in threes. We've had three sling failures in three days, and that's hopefully all we'll have. Each one of these had high potential. Please be extra diligent and be certain to know the weight of any load you intend to move using rigging equipment. When the new rules around cranes and rigging were announced by OSHA and safety agencies, there was a lot of outcry from craftsmen and employers alike. I was right there complaining about it too. But as I've said many times in my safety career, most rules are written because something bad happened. Let's take heed of these near-miss warnings and ensure that we're doing things right.